look at the uh, emissions that are happening in a region wise for the what are the major sources of the various important uh, pollutants that we discussed so far so you can see here as we expect the largest sources of so2 are in china and india followed by southeast asia middle east africa is an entire continent so it, it, its measure is different but china and india has are, are the largest sources of so2 emissions because they rely a lot on coal power plants to drive their electricity production and coal emit a lot of sox or so2 emissions okay Compar comparatively European countries, United States, Latin America have significantly lower SO2 emissions. Okay. If you look at the NOx emissions, again a, a similar kind of a, a story but with uh, some crucial differences. Firstly, if you look at SO2 emissions, the largest sources are industry where for example coal is used for heating purposes and power where coal is used for power production purposes all right when it comes to nox emissions transportation begins to take a very big chunk of nox emissions also power is there industry is there so nox emissions also happen for power and industry but transportation is a very big chunk once again china is a leading emitter of nox followed by united states uh, European Union also have reasonably large NOx emissions compared comparable with India. Uh, this is because uh, transportation sector is, uh, there is a lot of cars uh, being used in many of the developing world, developed world countries. So car based NOx emissions are quite high in many of the developed world countries as well, like European Union and United States. Uh, in China and in India, uh, power production also takes up a significant chunk because coal based power production also produces a lot of NOx along with transportation. Okay. Now we discussed smog. So let us discuss what smog is and how it is formed. Okay. Now smog is kind of a pungent brown haze that is formed near cities and industrial districts and is primarily seen in winter mornings. So why does this happen? So this is due to a buildup of pollutants in the atmosphere. Okay. Why does the pollutants build up? Now typically in summer and during daytime, the land surface heats up due to the rays of the sun and which heats up the air close to the land surface. And this hot air is becomes less dense and rises upwards while the colder air from higher atmosphere comes down. Okay, so this is a natural convection circuit. This natural convection process helps to transport the pollutants in an urban area or an industrial area from near the sur surface air to the upper atmosphere where they can spread over a larger area and hence their concentrations per unit volume of air can drop. However, in winter nights, the land surface becomes quite cold and the air close to the land surface becomes dense because it also becomes quite cold and hence becomes dense. And dense air tends to stay put. Now, during winter, so sun's rays are weak and the land surface remains cold for a larger period of the day. So, till say noon time, the land surface does not heat up significantly enough and the air close to the surface remains dense and heavy. What this means is, because dense cold air continues to remain on the surface, there is no convection current with the upper atmosphere that is forming. As a result, all the pollutants that are being uh, emitted uh, due to the transportation and due to the industrial activities in the early morning times, all get trapped in this dense layer of the atmosphere, late night activities and early morning activities. And that concentration starts to build up. How much of these uh, pollutants are there per unit volume of air close to the surface starts to build up. And that is the trigger for NOx formation. Now what are the main constituents of NOx? NO2 and O3 are the main constituents of NOx. So NO2 is a brown gas with sharp pungent biting order, okay, odor, 
odor is smell basically and below 21 degree centigrade NO2 becomes an yellowish brown liquid and creates liquid particles suspended in air that gives smog its characteristic opacity and color. So nitrogen dioxide below 21 degree centigrade becomes liquid. So there is a liquid vapor phase transition that happens uh, when the air temperature falls below 21 degree which is very typical during winter times. So the NO2 gas becomes suspended liquid droplets, yellowish brown liquid droplets that get suspended in air and that makes the air opaque and brownish. Okay, So instead of the typical white mist or white uh, fog that happens due to just the suspension of water molecules that have condensed during winter times, here this uh, brownish yellow water droplets are forming of NO2 and this creates the brownish haze like condition that you see in smog. Okay. Further, NO2 reacts with sunlight in the presence of oxygen and generates nitric oxide and ozone as we showed before. And this ozone has a pungent chlorine like smell, so a fishy chlorine like smell which gives smog its characteristic pungent and foul smell. So the foul smell of smog that you see is due to the presence of ozone and ozone is pale blue in color. So often you will see smog has a kind of a bluish brown tinge to it okay. and it's also extremely harmful to lung tissue. So that is what makes smog a significant health hazard. So that is kind of uh, expression of how smog forms and why it particularly forms in winter and what are the toxic gases and liquids that are present in it. And again, uh, this is a state of global air uh, report that, uh, uh, that was published in 2020 from which I am getting this map. It gives the distribution of uh, smog particles, okay, exposure to ozone and smog. So this is the concentration of ozone close to the surface and it's kind of a surrogate for uh, con uh, of occurrence of smog. And you see once again India is the country which has the largest concentration of oil close to the surface ozone. So you have a lot of smog formation in India uh, and also in Middle East but particularly in India where you have 65 to 68 parts per billion of ozone present close to the atmosphere which is a very high number. Next, we can come to particulate matters. Okay, so particulate matters are often written as PM10, PM2.5, PM1, and PM nano. These basically are the average diameter of the particles that we are discussing. So PM10 has 10 micrometer size particles in it on average. PM2.5 is 2.5 micrometer size particles. PM1 is 1 micrometer sized particles and below that you get PM nano, nanometer sized particles. So PM10 is the most measured but PM2.5 is the most harmful because they go deep into the lung tissue PM2.5 and, and is carcinogenic and causes lung cancer like diseases. Okay. And it is kind of made up of either dust particles during construction dust, etc., as well as soot particles due to incomplete combustion. Okay, so those are the main uh, processes by which particulate matters are formed. Okay. And again, if you see, uh, China and India as countries have the highest concentration of particulate matter 2.5 emissions in the world which again partially explains why you have so many more, so much mortality rates due to pollution in these two countries as well as Southeast Asia and most of it comes actually from construction activities in buildings okay so unlike uh, traditional ideas most of the particular matter emissions is due to the high construction activities and associated dust that is formed but industry is the second largest transport is a small sector and then is the other so Actually, while we focus on transport a lot, it's buildings and industry that produces the largest amount of PM 2.5 emissions in India and China. So these are the concentrations in micrograms per meter cube. So micrograms is 10 to the minus 6 grams 
per meter cube of air and clearly you can see India is again the largest as the largest concentration of PM 2.5 among anywhere in the world. The two largest is India and Nepal. Okay. Then followed by some African countries like Niger, then some mix, uh, uh, Middle Eastern countries like Qatar, Egypt, etc. But India is one of the largest. So uh, that is a significant cause for concern for Indian pollutants health. And this kind of reflects in the concentration values. These are the average annual PM 2.5 concentration in selected areas, selected cities. So Patna, New Delhi, Dhaka, Karachi, all the Southeast Asian, South and Southeast Asian countries have the largest measured concentrations of PM 2.5, okay, which are kind of goes above 90 micrograms per meter cube. Okay. China is there, Beijing. If you can see, this is also a Chinese center, Shizhang Huang, that is present, which have also high PM 2.5 emissions, uh, uh, concentrations above 60 or 90 micrograms per meter cube. Remember though that uh, according to the World Health Organization, the uh, safe concentration of outdoor PM 2.5 is just 10 micrograms per meter cube. So this is like 90 to 100 and 9 to 12 times that concentration we are seeing in these cities, okay, which is why it's such a health hazard in, in the world. So sectorial PM 2.5 emissions have been measured in different parts of India. So this is Kolkata, Mumbai, Chennai, Bangalore, Delhi, and there are differences as you can see. However, if you see industrial emissions of PM 2.5 are the largest. So it is either industrial furnaces, that are burning coal and emitting them or industrial activities uh, like construction etc are a significant source of PM 2.5. Residential activities are also strangely an important source in many parts of the, of the country. Okay, And the rest is transport. Again the transport contribution differs significantly. So Bangalore has the highest transport contribution whereas Delhi strangely has lower. So. Uh, Regardless of what the media suggests, if you look at these pictures, it is not only transport, but residential sectors, industrial sectors, and to some extent, construction dust. Okay, that also becomes an important contributor. So, uh, we will stop here today. Uh, we discussed the pollution emissions. In the next lecture, we will look at the impact of fossil fuels on climate change, which is one of the major problems and concerns that also is making fossil fuel based energy production unsustainability, unsustainable with time. So thank you for listening. Uh, we will have our tutorial this week. We will discuss how these emissions can be calculated for different power sectors. Uh, that will help you also get an understanding of how these things will be uh, working out overall. So uh, stay tuned for that. And in the next class, we will discuss the impact of uh, fossil fuels on uh, cattle uh, on triggering climate change and global warming. So thank you for listening and have a good day.